Alright, so this video is about dominance matrices. Now, I've made a video about dominance matrices before, and I've shown the mechanics of it. Second hand wins, third hand wins, uh, putting ones and zeros in a matrix, that kind of thing. But, uh, this video is really more about understanding that dominance matrices are really, really flexible. And you can do whatever you want with them, as long as you understand how they work, and what it does when you do those things. Okay, so let's look at a dominance matrix first of all. So here's our dominance matrix, here's our uh, dominance network. So what's going on here? Well the ends are non-standard, that's my own little addition here. A and B never played, A and C never played, but we'll deal with that in a minute. Um, a beat D, A beat E, and we can see that here. A has dominance over E and A has dominance over D. So I'm putting ones here where someone has dominance over somebody else. Alright, this is all pretty standard at the moment, and if we would add up our wins, we'd get two wins for A, one win for B, zero wins for C, one win for D, and one win for E. Now, that's a problem because B, D, and E are all tied on one point, so we could take this matrix and square it. Alright, I've done it, I've taken matrix M, and, and then I've squared it, so this is matrix M squared. Now when I do that, A gets some secondhand wins, uh, on B and C, so there's two points there. B gets no secondhand wins, C gets no secondhand wins, D gets a secondhand win, and E gets secondhand win. Now, if I were to use like a really simple um, dominance matrix idea, just change my letters a little bit, D, D squared. So if I take a dominance matrix idea where I just take this matrix and add this matrix, A will end up having two plus two points, which is four points, so that'll be A. Um, B will end up having 1 plus 0, which is 1. C will have 0 plus 0, which is 0. D will have 1 plus 1, which is 2. And E will have 1 plus 0, which is 1. Not bad. Now I know that uh, this is better than it was before, right? Because now I know that D is better than uh, B and E. But I haven't split up B and E yet. So I could, again, do a th another matrix here, D cubed, and come up with something for that. So there's my D cubed matrix here, and you can hopefully see that it's not really doing much for me. It's come up with a third hand win for A. So that means that A's score, if I were to now change my matrix a little bit to D plus D squared plus D cubed, A would end up having five points, but I still haven't managed to split B and E. Okay, but this is what this video is about. Dominance matrices are yours. You can do whatever you want with them. So, let's take a look at this sport. What sport is it? Uh, maybe it's rugby union, right? And maybe uh, when you play at home, you have an advantage because the crowd is roaring for you. Um, and so, if you win when you're away from home, you should get an extra something. Maybe it's not worth one point, maybe it's worth two points. So I've just made a slight alteration to my matrix here because it turns out that when A and D play each other, A won, but it was on D's home turf, so A deserves some extra credit for that. So they get two points instead of one point. Um, maybe when E and C played each other, that was uh, on C's home turf and E won, so E should get double points for that, so they get the two there. Now, what does how does that affect our rankings here? Well, that means that A has three points, B has one point, C has zero points still, not great C, D has one point, and E has uh, two points. All right, so from the get-go, we have a different thing here, but B and D haven't been separated yet. Now, what happens if I take that matrix and square it? Well, it has this effect here. Those second-hand wins that A gets now end up being worth double points. Now, is that a good thing or a bad thing? Well, it seems kind of strange to me that these second-hand wins, that the games that never, ever got played, because of this fact, because this one's worth double points, then this one ends up being worth double points, and because this one's worth double points, then that ends up being worth double points. Okay, but regardless, that means that this matrix has a four point here, a zero, a zero, a one here, and a zero there. Now, 
if we just were to use a formula that looked a little bit like this, d plus d squared, we could then come up with new numbers here. 3 plus 4, a gets 7 points, b gets 1 point, c gets 0 points, d gets 2 points, and e gets 2 points. Oh dear. But that doesn't seem fair, because d's only got 2 points, because d's picking up uh, second-hand wins. E got two points uh, specifically because it beat two teams. So now I'm looking at this formula and going, well, uh, there's something wrong with this. Um, why don't I fix it? Because maybe I should make second-hand wins only worth a half. So if I were to do that, then these change. Three plus half of four is five. One plus half of zero is one. C gets 0, 1 plus half of 1 is 1.5, and E, 2 plus half of 0 is 2. Okay, so now I've got a new ranking that takes into account a couple of things. Winning games away from home is hard, and you should be rewarded for that. Doubly. Uh, it also takes into account that a second-hand win is not worth as much as a first-hand win, one where you actually beat a person. Now, maybe we're looking at this and we're saying, you know what, uh, the away game thing, the event, like the thing where it's hard to win games away from home, that shouldn't uh, carry over to the second hand win thing. That's just a, a stretch. So maybe when I do that, I should reinterpret the d squared and I should convert all uh, non-zero numbers to the number one. And if you were to choose to do that, you could do that because it's your mathematical model. Do whatever you want. So you turn these into ones, that'll end up being two. It'll be three plus half of two, and that would end up being uh, four instead of five. Okay, so uh, that's something that we can do. Now, what if um, actually A and D, when they played their game, A didn't beat D, actually. There was a last minute thing, and uh, D. It was a tie. It was a tie. Right? That means we don't have any dominance, or we have double dominance, or half dominance, or something like that. How are we going to deal with that? Well, there's a couple of ways we can deal with it. We can say, no one won. So you get a zero. We could say, well, you both won. So you get a one. Or we could say, it was a tie. So you both half won. So we'll give you half points. Um, now, all three of those are going to have different ramifications. Uh, let's look at what would happen if we said, um, well, you both won. Because it was a tie, you both won. Okay, what is, and let's get rid of the home away advantage because that just is complicating matters a little bit for us at the moment. Okay, so A and D, it was a tie. So you get a point. And... Uh, a and D, it was a tie, so you get a point, right? It's as good as a win. Uh, and this was a one, okay. So, when I look at this now, A has two points, B has one point, C has zero points, D has two points, and E has one point. Well, that seems kind of fair, I suppose. A won one and drew one, D won one and drew one. Um, but would it always be fair? Would there be a circumstance, say, where someone had won two games and had two points, and someone else had won one and drawn one, and they also had two points? It seems fairly clear-cut that the person who won two games should have more points than the person who won one and drew one. So just something to keep in mind here, maybe there might be a different way to do this. Maybe instead we could say, right, if you get a draw, uh, it's not worth one. It's worth 0 0.5. It's not worth 1. It's worth 0 0.5. Okay. And now that has the effect, if we square that matrix now, that's going to do some weird stuff to this matrix. Okay, and you can see that those decimals have carried through to here, and A gets uh, 1 and 3 quarters from the second order matrix, and D also gets one and three quarters from the second order matrix. So now it's really hard to split A and D. Mm, 
maybe maybe one of those wins happened away from home. Maybe they did. Maybe um, maybe A annihilated E. Maybe A beat E by eighty points. And in which case, uh, you get a bonus point if you beat someone by more than 30 points. And maybe this isn't worth one, maybe this is worth two. Um, it's really up to you. It's your mathematical model, and you need to do whatever makes sense, given the data that you've been given. And you need to make good choices about that. Um, going, Moving away from the matrix a little bit, and just moving to here a little bit, this number here is a really important number to consider. A second hand win, a third hand win. Sometimes a second hand win is like as good as a win. If a person and I had a weightlifting competition, just where we saw who could lift the most weight. If one of us had a wanted to know, are we as good as this other person? It's pretty straightforward. Uh, because those competitions... As long as that person lifted this much, and this person lifted this much, and this person lifted this much, a second-hand win is as good as a win. Consider something instead like um, judo or wrestling or something, where one person might have a really long reach, and that's their advantage. Someone might be really good at, like, grappling and wrestling. Someone else might be really good at, like, punching or something. And you get a situation where you get, like, a triangle, where A dominates B and B dominates C and C dominates A because of their different fighting styles. If that's the case, secondhand wins probably aren't worth very much at all in those kinds of sporting events. Um, hopefully, I have made clear to you that when it comes to dominance matrices, you can deal with it however you want to deal with it as long as you understand the ramifications of the changes that you're making to your mathematical model, and as long as you understand why and can explain why you're making those decisions when it comes to your mathematical model. That's dominance matrices.